Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to continue off from where we left off. Now, if you look at my environment here, you'll see I've implemented a few changes. Now, none of it is functional whatsoever. I really just put in some trees from the pack. I put in some water and put some islands in the back. There's not much else going on. Also, our test item now looks a little bit more like a piece of wood, just to make it actually assemble something. What I want to implement in this video is uh, the ability to drop items again as well. So let's get right into that. And one of the things that we have to do is on the inventory item, I want to see when we essentially right click it. So one way that we can do this is we can implement the I click, or I point a click handler and we can uh, implement the uh, interface uh, method here. So what we can do is first of all, we can check if the event data dot button uh, is not the pointer event data input button of right, which means, you know, that's our right click. And now if we just quickly debug out here uh, for something like click, you'll notice that when I start to drag, even if it's with right click, so let me just do like this. So if I drag normally or click normally with my left mouse button, nothing happens. If I drag with my right mouse button, you can see nothing came in the console either, but when I click with the right mouse button, it'll say click. This is how we know that they're actually intending to drop it and didn't actually mean to drag it around or something. So this is very good. Now this is where we first of all uh, want the inventory manager and we essentially want to drop the item again. Now let's start by getting the manager. So let's say if we do not get it with the instant handle, we can first of all debug log out an error saying something like fail to get inventory manager to drop item. And we just return. Uh, and now we want to say essentially what it is that we want to drop. So we can do inventory manager dot drop item and we can just feed it this inventory item that we wanted to drop. And now we can just automatically create this method with the old enter method. So let me put this up here. Let me just put it up somewhere here under add new item. Maybe it makes sense to me. And now we've got to figure out what it is that we want to drop. Now, the thing is we don't actually store the actual item um, because the we don't have a reference to the prefab. Now that always you need to get this, but this can mess up things further down the line. So what I'm going to do for now, just to keep it really simple, and there's a lot of ways that you can do this, but I'm just going to make a list and essentially have a list of all our items, just so we always have a reference to all prefabs. Um, so let me just make a list of items and I'll just call this all items and set that equals to new. Now we can always set all items in the inspector. You could also make methods to automatically pull all your items by the click of like a button or a context menu or something, which would definitely be more handy than having to manually put them in. Um, but for now, again, this is just a testing setup, so I'm just gonna do it like that. So first things first is we gotta check, uh, we gotta essentially find the entry, so the inventory item data uh, of this inventory item. So first things first, let's find the one that we clicked on. So I'm going to go through essentially the inventory item data uh, with a for loop. So we're going to go uh, for uh, and then we'll do the what do we call the inventory Oops. item? Nope. What do we call the list? We called it inventory data. My apologies for inventory data dot count. And then we want to say this is essentially the data that we want to check. And then we check if data dot inventory item is the same as the inventory item that's attempting to be or essentially if it's not the same, we just want to continue. And then here we can do whatever logic that we want. So first of all, we want to go down the amount and then we can also check if the data dot amount goes less than or equals zero. We essentially want to clear out that piece of data anyway. Um, but we're going to do this by the end of it. But let's just keep this open. First things first, we actually want to spawn the item in front of us. Now with the inventory manager, we don't actually know which player is ours right now. And one of the ways we can do that is we can just identify it by the player movement, possibly. And one of the easy ways to probably do this is to just store the local one in here. Um, or we can potentially just store it as a static. That might be simple enough. Um, so let's do something like, uh, let's just do make it simple. Let's do public, static, player movement. And this will be the local player movement, like so. And this we just set when we are the owner, we just set the local player movement equal to this. Easy as that. Because now in the inventory manager, we can easily always just reference the player by doing player movement dot local player movement. And now we go. Now we have the local one. Cool. Um, so what we want to do is we want to spawn the item. But first, we also got to get the item or the prefab of the item, which we now have in our all items list. So I'm gonna do bar item to spawn, and that will be equal to, um, and that'll essentially be uh, let's do all items dot find. And then we can do uh, the search here. So we can say X um, and compare the item.name. 
to the data.item now, which we already stored on here. And now we can just check if the item to spawn is equal to null. We of course want to return and also just throw out an error. This should never really be hit as long as you remember to add it to the list. But uh, item to spawn with name data.item name not found like so. And so now we can essentially spawn it and we can decide why we want to spawn it. So I'm just gonna do var item equals to instantiate. And now we wanna instantiate the item to spawn. But we also want to do it at the local player movement that transforms our position and then maybe a little bit in front of it, similar to what we're doing here. And we can also do it a little bit above. So let's just, to make this more clear, let's make a new vector three, which will be spawn position equals two, and then we'll add it equals to this and we can then also add a little bit of vector3.up just to not have it on the ground and like so there we go so this should essentially be the item that is spawned now and now we'll deduct the amount from the data and if the data amount is less than or equal to zero uh, we'll essentially just clear out that piece of data we now no longer have uh, that inventory item um, so the way that we do this uh, I guess let's maybe make a new method for this as we might need it again in the future. So let me just make a private void and we'll make, uh, let's do a deduct item and we'll give it the inventory item data, inventory item, like so, and we'll just feed that in here. Uh, and then this will just break the loop. And this is not the data, this is the inventory item, like so. Cool, so now what we can essentially do is a similar for loop and just check that the data matches. So we can do a completely similar loop here, like so. Uh, and then here we essentially want to take the data amount down and then we can always reapply it. But essentially if, um, I think what it wants to do here is completely correct actually, very impressed. Uh, we don't want to initialize it. Oh, actually we do want to initialize it again, um, which we do by, item picture which we don't have at this point because we would need the raw item um, but i guess we can always just store the public sprite item picture in here as well uh, that does technically mean we have it installed in multiple places which isn't the cleanest thing in the world um, but i think it should work it's just important now that where we create the inventory item data uh, we remember to also set it. So where we add it and we create it here, we can then also do item picture equals to the item dot item picture, like so. Okay, cool. So I think with this logic, it should hopefully now work to also drop things. Let's have a look. I'm gonna pick up, let's say three of them. I'm gonna right click on one. Uh, oh, and of course we didn't add it to the list. I already forgot, look at that. I'm gonna go into my prefetch folder, test item. Oh, and I don't see it. Oh, that's because it's the interaction manager. I'm in the wrong. Uh, oh yeah, the inventory manager was on the canvas, which is here. Inventory manager, there we go. And all items need to go in here. So I'll just add the test item in there. There we go. Now let's try it again. I'll go and pick it up. And you have three. And I press right click and there we go. Now we spawn them again. And as you can see, it also deducts it. Cool. So now we have a functioning drag and drop inventory system where we can also drop items again. Awesome, and this should of course work in multiplayer, but let me just go test to confirm it. So let me start it up here. And let's have the other client join in. So there he is, and he's gonna pick up some of these. And now I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna right click on them. And there we go. Now, as we can see, these are flying. So let's have a look at why it is that they are flying. Um, they're not kinematic, which is interesting. Oh, this is because they are owner authorized and not server authorized on the network transform. This actually makes a big difference because the guy dropping them will automatically be the owner in this case because we're just using the default unsafe rule set. So now if we do it like this instead, where I just disable the owner off, which means it's now the server that's authorized to move the items around. When I now drop them, they should drop successfully because now it's the server running the logic. We could also have the owner be the one running the logic. That wouldn't be completely unusual. And for that sake, we could also have it be so that he's not the owner upon dropping them. That's also very viable. There's, there's multiple ways to go about this, but for our case, this should work just fine for now. Well, I hope that you learned something and I hope this is what you were looking for. Now we already have a functioning inventory system with multiplayer. And of course we can add things such as chests, crafting or whatever later on. Let me know in the comments what videos you'd also like to see. Other than that, I just hope you'd want to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day.